учусь на первом курсе на руническом факультете. I'm studying in the first course of the rooms department. After completing the last lessons on the rooms course, various unpleasant events started happening in my life. Generally, by the way of the governmental control system. The events are wrapping like a rope around my neck and will soon suffocate me. How to get out of this situation with minimum losses, or even better, with a victory? I implemented the method of finding nine variations of the event development. I wrote them down, but I can tell if they're working or not yet. This is difficult for me. I perceive it as some sort of a blowback or a provocation, or as debts to the system. I read the forum, and my colleagues also write about unpleasant events in their lives that came to the surface. To be honest, I had a thought that I'm not worthy of the runes, and that I don't understand what I'm doing. Would you please comment on that? I will comment. Most likely the described phenomenon, and it's not just you, but it also pertains to all other colleagues, is connected to a simple effect. These are provocations, of course. When we come to runes, when we learn the runes, when we reconfigure our consciousness through magical currents of runes, we thereby announce our right to freedom. If until this time you lived within an egregorial environment, under Christianity or any other Abrahamic religion, where no free folk exists, only serfs, no matter what anyone says, it is written in the Judeo-Christian canon law, suddenly, out of nowhere, you declare to yourself, I am not a serf, I am free, all the systems where you were labeled as a serf within their algorithm, they get really surprised and say, go ahead, show us the proof. And how can we prove anything to the system? Only by getting into a confrontation with them, which means going through event-based trials in which we indeed must prove that we won't give up, won't come to them bowing, won't agree to their rules of result achievement and existence, but rather will continue to prove that freedom is a natural individual right. Not sure if for everybody, but yours for sure, and that you are ready to prove it. After that, the events will follow, meaning certain event-based game-type variations. If you remember that those are just provocations and game-type variations, it would be much easier for you to overcome them, if only you don't forget about yourself. For that, you should definitely change your worldview paradigm. And don't look at the social world and egregorial system as if they were your masters. But rather... Rather see them as unpleasant weather phenomena, as a sudden wind gust, as a limping horse, as a virus that flies around you and you never know when and where you would catch it, as a vile foe that can attack you from behind, as an enemy attack that you should expect at any moment. Meaning that you should act like a free person and never look at the world and the egregorial systems of any level as your masters or rules of your life. Look at them as an essential part of this world. They exist, so what? There is winter, summer, sun and bad weather. There are mosquitoes, they bite, there are ticks, they carry lion disease, terrible. Meaning that all of it is a part of life. This is life. And you should survive in it without forgetting that you are free. Knowing that there are ticks that spread Lyme disease and you don't have immunity to it since no such vaccine exists, you won't spend your day praying to a tick god hoping you don't get sick. Or you won't bow to him left and right saying, do you tick, don't bite me. You will go to the forest, voice your request to Leshi, leave him the offerings and proceed with whatever you need to do there. If you don't want to leave any offerings for the forest spirit, then you can spray some nasty stuff on your skin. But to deprive yourself of rights and opportunities simply because such phenomena exist in nature, perhaps would be unreasonable. A similar approach applies here as well. Simply remember that you are free. The egregors are provoking you. The runes, by the way, they provoke as well. You came to runes, 
You follow the path that had already been established for you by your forebears, teachers, gods, and at some point you will reach a certain crossroad. There sits Soloviera's Boynik, the nightingale brigand, and he will say, come on now, let's whistle like a nightingale, since we need to test it somehow, if you are following the right path or not. And he will give a whistle. After that comes the test. You either turn around, or sometimes you may beat a hasty retreat, or you drop dead, or you start arguing with Soloviera's Boynik, saying that since he had whistled, now he would get a punch in the face for it, so on and so forth. Russian fairy tales describe how it is usually done, when you follow the way that you didn't pave yourself. Therefore, perceive this as a necessary condition of the provocation. The further you go, the more you'll face them on your way. Remember that, don't forget it. And then after some time, you will be able to overcome them with fun, while swearing, and you'll be happy with the proposed game rules. Because there is nothing scarier in this world than you, yourself, for yourself. And if you keep remembering that, then you may see this game model, this game type environment to be quite entertaining, perhaps.